I'm Marissa from beautifullyorganized.com and today I'm going to share with you 10 super easy ways that you can save money. So the first way is to just wait 48 hours when you want to buy something. If you're at the shops and you see something and you think, oh, I want to buy that, or if you're online and you're doing some online window shopping um, and you see something that you want, just think to yourself, yeah, sure, I can buy that, but I'm going to wait 48 hours before I actually buy it. So if you're out and about, well, you're just gonna have to go back to the shops. Or if you're online, you can put it in your shopping cart, but don't buy it for 48 hours because usually you get to the end of that 48 hours and you don't even want it anymore. Sometimes you don't even remember that you wanted it or even that you saw it. So yeah, wait 48 hours and I guarantee you, your purchases will go down and your savings will go up. My second tip is to just make simple dinners. You don't have to make fancy dinners and buy 13 different kinds of spices and sauces and ingredients to go with this fancy dinner and just make it once and then you've wasted all that money on the spices and the sauces and the ingredients. I can't tell you how many times I've done that in the past and we've, we've ended up spending like $28 on a dinner that we could have spent $7 on for the whole family. That's a big difference in money. And a lot of the time, my kids didn't like trying new stuff anyway. So we have a roster of uh, 30 simple meals that we like to do. And we just kind of rotate through that 30. I can give you a copy if you want. Um, I'll make sure it's accessible in the description box. Um, and if I forget, just let me know in the comments and I will um, remember to put it in that way. But basically, stick to meals that you already enjoy and that aren't expensive to make. Don't feel like you have to do restaurant quality dishes. I know we all love watching cooking shows and I know HelloFresh is a thing, but we really don't need to do fancy dinners or expensive dinners. You can just do basics, you know, cheaper things. <laughs> Some of our favorite meals are spaghetti or meatballs and veggies or, or burgers. Most of our dinners have meat, veggies, and carbs. Or meat, salad, and carbs. Or fish, salad, and carbs. <laughs> It's really, really basic and it's a lot cheaper. You can buy a bag of potatoes for $5 and that will last you the entire week. So yeah, keep your meals simple. Onions and garlic will make everything magical and they're really cheap. My third tip is to walk or ride your bike instead of driving, if you can. If you live super far, super far away from everywhere or if you're doing a massive grocery shop for the whole month, okay, fine, then you're not gonna walk or ride your bike. But if your school is up the road, walk with your kids to school or if the library is not too far away catch the bus to the library you'll save yourself on petrol you'll get a little more healthy you get to be outside in nature a little bit so you'll feel better as well and you'll save some money i will say i did fall off my bike once when i got back into bike riding and that was embarrassing but that's because i had these sneakers on and my shoelaces got caught up in my um spokes on my bike wheel and every time i like pedaled forward my shoe got closer and closer to the wheel and then I ended up like tipping over but you know what though three people stopped and see if I needed any help and I ended up getting to know some of the neighbors so that was really nice I'm not saying that should happen to you I'm just saying it's okay if it's not perfect but yeah do a little more walking do a little more riding do a little less driving you'll save a lot of money and you'll probably really enjoy it once you get into it tip number four is to stop buying books and magazines don't buy dvds Cancel your streaming service if you want to, because you can go to the library and get all of the books, magazines, and um, movies that you want for free. And because you're giving them back, they don't cause clutter either. Even better. Tip number five is to shop secondhand. So if you want something, I like to keep a little list of the things I want, and then I just go and look at the op shops once a week. And if something that I want, something that's on my list is at the shop, then I buy it then. And sometimes I'll buy things for $2 instead of $20. And it's amazing because it means that somebody else got to get rid of their clutter. I'm helping a charity and I'm saving money at the same time. Tip number six is to stop buying processed snacks at the supermarket and just snack on fruits, veggies, crackers, or something that you bake yourself at home. It is so much cheaper. It's probably better for you too. But it's so much cheaper. So instead of spending $2 on each packet of snacks, you could spend $5 on flour and sugar and a bit of vanilla and get a couple of pieces of fruit and you can make muffins or you can make cookies or you can, you know, do something at home. Or just cut up some capsicum and cucumber and tomatoes and carrot sticks and snack on those during the day. Or get some bananas or some grapes or some berries. It's really easy to snack on that stuff and if you buy in season, way cheaper than it is to buy processed packaged 
snacks. My next tip is to eat all your leftovers. Wasting food is wasting money. So if you have made some dinner and you have dinner left over, have it for lunch the next day. Um, I, I would normally say put it in your freezer and have it for dinner later, but I'm really bad at that because then I put food in my freezer and I forget it's there and then I wonder how old it is and then I end up wasting the food. So for me, if we have leftovers, I have them for lunch the next day. I put them in the kids' lunch boxes. You would be surprised at what the kids eat, especially seeing they get bored with the regular sandwich and fruit and snack. So you could put, I put cold potatoes in our lunches, leftover veggies, Whatever meat we've had, you could wrap it up in a wrap. It doesn't have to be fancy. But yeah, use your leftovers for lunches the next day or for dinner the next day and just do it a little bit different, like cook it up a little bit different. If you've roasted a chicken one day, then you can make chicken soup the next day or chicken wraps the next day. Yeah, use your leftovers. You'll save heaps of money. Tip number eight is to put a really easy dinner in your freezer for that night where you don't feel like cooking. And I mean a really easy dinner. We sometimes do fish fingers or chicken pies. Well, you know what you can do? Go and get a pizza from Aldi for $3. I think they're $3. They're not very expensive. Stick it in your freezer because there is always going to be that night where you don't want to cook and you end up ordering pizza and then you spend, what, $20, $30, $40 on pizza when you could have spent $3 on a pizza from Aldi and then you're done. You've just saved like $37 and you didn't have to cook. Well, I mean, you turn on the oven and you stick something in the oven and then you take it out of the oven and that's it. That's all you had to do. So even though I know people are like, yeah, I don't want to buy any junky foods um, for my dinners during the week, there's always going to be a night where you don't want to cook. Just save yourself the hassle, save yourself the money and get the cheaper version of that not having to cook meal from the supermarket and stick it in your freezer. Tip number nine, cut up your credit card. Cut up your credit card or at least stick it in a cup of water, stick it in the freezer and try and forget that you even have it, but cutting it up is even better. And close your account. You don't need a credit card anymore to buy stuff online or to pay past things. You just need a debit card that has that capability. You can get a debit MasterCard or a debit Visa card, that's fine. You don't need to use other people's money because if you buy something on credit, then you're always gonna end up paying more for it in the long run. There's not many of us that can actually pay off our credit card balance in full and not have to pay any interest. It's great if you can, most of us can't. So cut up your credit cards, close the accounts, then you don't have to increase your debt and you'll end up saving money in the long run on your repayments. You know what? You don't need a credit card anymore anyway because you're buying cheap pizzas from Aldi and you're shopping at off shops and you're making seafood dinners and you're saving money in other areas. So you don't even need credit anymore. Tip number 10 is very, very similar. I want you to just completely forget that Afterpay or ZipPay or any of those things even exist. It's just credit card without the card. You don't need it. If you have to Afterpay a $20 purchase and pay $5 a month over four months, I would bet you any money that you could do without that thing that you want to buy or you could buy it cheap at the op shop or you could wait and get it for your birthday as a present and have people contribute to it or you could just make do without it if you absolutely have to. Because Afterpay is pretty much just making you buy stuff that you can't afford and making you feel like you can afford it and then you buy the thing and you get it home and it's not new anymore it's not fun anymore and you've forgotten that you even bought it you don't use it but you're still paying for it over the next couple of months it's a waste of money don't use afterpay and that's our 10 tips today i hope you found them helpful if you did hit the like button and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye and you end up ordering pizza and Sorry, a motorbike went past.